I'm going to uh, dive into a little prayer. And uh, if you guys are not familiar with prayer, and if you guys are just joining for the first time, this is a universal practice. It doesn't matter whether you have a religious practice or not, or faith or tradition. Um, doesn't matter where you're from in the world, what language you speak, what country you're from. Uh, it's available. It's a universal language. It's available for us to connect our individual soul with our source, with the, with the divine, our divine beloved. And so that line is open constantly for us. It's like a cell phone number. It's like an Instagram live that we can just press the button of prayer and connect to our higher power, connect to our soul. So we're going to dive in. You can find a, a comfortable seat or standing posture wherever you are. If you can just pause wherever you are right now, if it's possible, and just close your eyes and start to take some nice deep inhales and exhales. And just starting to connect to the rhythm of your body. I'm just finding that stillness. And just letting these words, just let them enter in, just opening up all the gates to your consciousness, the gates to your heart, and just allowing for the prayer and for the sound to enter into your heart, to touch your soul. My dear Lord, help me to fix my mind upon you and engage all of my intelligence in you. Help me to lead a life where I don't put anyone into difficulty. I don't take offense by anyone, but rather I uplift those I come into contact with and remain humble and kind in each, each exchange in my life. Whether I experience happiness and distress, fear or anxiety, make me equipoised so that I see each moment bringing me closer and closer to you. In honor or dishonor, heat or cold, happiness or distress, fame or infamy, may my consciousness remain fixed, seeing each moment as an opportunity for me to surrender to you and to serve you with all my love. My Lord, please free me from doubt. Help me awaken unflinching faith in your divine will. With courage, let me walk into the challenges, knowing that they're bringing me closer to you. Let me live with you always, without doubt, in each moment of my life, knowing that you will always show me the way. Hare Krishna, 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 or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're from, wherever you are right now in the world. There's so many beautiful souls here that have joined us here. I'm so glad to see so many steady souls I see on a regular basis. Sri Mundry from Europe is here. Diana, all the way from Florida. Naushin, so beautiful to see you. All these wonderful souls, so glad that you guys are here. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting that, you know, you and I were in the same city, Vera. Like a lot of people that, that I know, we know, even some residents of the Bhakti Center, um, you know, um, left New York City to go be with, with family or a place that maybe was a little more comfortable. New York City can be an intense place. So maybe they're in Florida or they're here or there. And it's like, oh, you and I, we stayed here. We're in New York City together. But you're in Manhattan. I'm in Brooklyn. We haven't seen each other for a week and a half. And it's like, we're as close to each other as somebody in Australia or Florida. Or, you know, it's totally. Kind of like yeah, the same totally. thing, you know, we're still, we're just digitally connected. And so, but grateful for it. And uh, how you doing? How you doing this morning? I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm doing good. Had a, a beautiful morning practice this morning. Uh, mm. Probably already about an hour of kirtan this morning. And Jeez Louise. See, an hour and a half of meditation and reading and got up early. And I got up at 4.30 and I was like, I should sleep more. And I was like, mm. I'm, and, and, and I purposely put my alarm so that I have to get out of bed in order to, mm, you know, yeah. to, to actually touch it. Um, and so, you know, once I get out of bed, I'm just like, ah, oh, whatever, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. just, it's time to get, it, it's time, it is the time of awakening. The time yeah. is now. And so, wow. 
And so, yeah, grateful for the early morning and uh, the practice with, you know, we got a few residents in the building. There were about seven of us mm. together this morning, uh, chanting and praying together and meditating together. And, uh, you know, yeah. we, we our social distancing is a, like, like about, you know, two to three feet apart from each other or not quite at six feet, but. Um, yeah. yeah, grateful for the practice. Super grateful for the practice yeah. and grateful to be with you guys this morning. How about you, awesome. DJ? How you, how you doing, bud? Sounds like a spiritually uplifting, surcharged morning. You know, I remember when I uh, lived in the ashram, it was like, uh, you know, by 10 o'clock, it's like, I've already had a full day, you know, <laughs> you wake up. But uh, I spent the morning trying to get my dog to pee outside. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did. And it was success. He did it for the first time. You know, we've had we have this t ten week old puppy that we don't take out too much because he's still getting like some of his just general vaccination shots, etc. And so, um, so he we got these wee pads. He pees inside, and um, he's doing like, pretty good with it. And we we've done this thing where we try to take him outside to go to the bathroom, and he literally like holds it out there, and he runs around, he plays, and then as soon as he comes back in, he goes to the bathroom. It's like you are not getting it. Like we just went outside, and so. We, we took him outside first thing in the morning. It's the first time we did that. And we literally, we took him outside, walked around for like 20 minutes. He would not go. We brought him back inside, put him in his crate because he doesn't go in his crate to like fill up, like hold his bladder, brought him back out. We had to take him outside three times. Mm. So anyway, while you, while you were absorbing yourself in Kirtan and Japa and morning program, that's what, that was my program. But he finally did. It was his first time going outside and... Give that is, treat. that's what we call parental love. <laughs> that's what we call unconditional parental love flowing, flowing from your hearts. Got your little baby and taking care of poops oh. and peas. And yeah, you were so proud of him. And anyways, he's figuring it out. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, so that's how I spent my morning. Awesome. <laughs> There's something that um, I mean, you know, it, it, it's beautiful, right? We were talking about it yesterday in our community group um, that it's it's amazing, right? Every moment of our life, we have an opportunity to show up with intention. This is it's yeah. been a theme. It's kind of we've been weaving it through our conversations that we've been having. And uh, I was reflecting. I was listening to a lecture from Radhanath Swami. Mm. Um, those of you that don't know Radhanath Swami, um, he's uh, he's my spiritual teacher and Doyal as well. He's our, our our primary spiritual teacher, and um, he gives lectures. You know, he's given so many hundreds and thousands of lectures throughout his life on on. The, the practices and principles of bhakti and how to really bring them into our life in a very practical way, really connecting to the essence of bhakti, which is the essence of any spiritual tradition, spiritual practice. And he was talking about, um, he's talking about hospitality. He's talking about mm. hospitality as a divine quality, that mm. the way we receive somebody in our life, the way we receive someone in our home, the way we receive somebody in a conversation is uh, as an instrument, right? If we're looking at that through mm. a spiritual, uh, spiritual lens, we're seeing the opportunity to serve in any one of those receptions. And so I was reflecting on it and seeing how in communication and in dialogue, what's so important right now is to be able to receive people with empathy, mm. which is really is that, okay, I'm holding space that I see this individual is a pure spirit soul. That this mm. is a pure illuminated being right now. Mm. I'm holding space for that a hundred percent. And yeah, at the yeah, same yeah. time, I'm showing up a hundred percent to be yeah. with them in their experience. Right? It's like when we're received in somebody's home, when they receive us and they sit us <sighs> down and they mm. offer us something to drink and you know, they, they, they're really interested in how we're doing and they're interested in what's going on in our life. And they're just there for us. It's like this reception when mm. we're doing that in our communication with each other, it, it facilitates for the best to come out of the person, right? Yeah. You know, to, to be humble, to be kind, and to receive somebody with that type of empathy and hospitality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facilitates for that individual to awaken spiritually. And I was thinking about totally. the analogy of, of like a, of a tree. When the tree has sun, it's mm. got earth, it's got the elements that it needs, the nutrients that it needs. When it's in the right environment, then it flourishes, right? It blossoms and it flourishes. Mm. And the same thing for human beings. When we're in the right environment, we've been talking about Sangha so much. When we're in the right environment, we're in Sangha, and that's all it takes. It's like just being held by another person. They're holding us in that spiritual light. They're holding that space for us with that divine empathy and hospitality. It's everything mm. that we need to begin to awaken our soul. And so yeah. just 
something that's so needed right now, the close proximity, you know, families coming together, um, you know, and, and yeah. having, having difficulty in that communication. So many yeah. different people talking about that and yeah. to be able to yeah. show up in that way. And, and, uh, and, and that when we do that, it's amazing, right? When we show up with that empathy and that hospitality, that, that mood of service, and St. Francis mm. says it's in giving that we receive, right? When we provide that space for another human being, mm. it, it's simultaneously, it uplifts them and surcharges them, brings the best out of them. And simultaneously, it's bringing out the best in us. We're the recipients of, of, of a spiritual uplifting experience. We become the receivers. Yeah, so, oh, it's so beautiful. So Thank you for that so much. I, 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 had some, um, I had some experiences of that and my own self just this morning and yesterday a little bit, because I, I think, you know, not everybody, but some of us or some people interact with, there's, there's an increasing sense of being a little on edge hmm. with some people because there's a lot going on. You know, we talk to somebody, you know, either they maybe have contracted the virus or their, their parents have, or they're worried about their family, their parents. Mm -hmm. And they are taking on, people are taking on so many extra responsibilities in terms of, trying to work from home or trying to find some info or just trying to keep myself engaged in a healthy way because, mm -hmm. you know, normally if I sit at home with myself, I sink into a low place and it's just bringing up so many things for people. And so there's this kind of sense of, of, of being a little, a little on edge. Um, and that can in, it heighten the, ten, the tension in communication. And so some of the communications that I was, I was having with people like, you know, myself, for example, of, you know, being a manager at the Bhakti Center and staff that we work with, it's, you know, we just, we ask, you know, we have to ask things for people and we try to keep accountabilities and we try to keep workflows, et cetera. And um, it's easy to take for granted the personal aspect of our dealings with other people. And sometimes people will, will respond back of something and, and, and I generally feel like I got to fix it. I got to recorrect the understanding. I need to um, clarify what's being misunderstood. And there's been a couple of times people have just spoken to me and just said, I just needed to get that out and express my feeling, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like I needed to like fix it. It's like, cause my sense is like before the feeling even gets out, it's like, Oh, whoa, hold, it's going to be okay. Like someone's like, you know, my parent contracted the virus. Well, I heard this story of, of this person who was totally fine. It's going to be okay. And you're going to do this. You know, I'm feeling overwhelmed with all the work that I've going, well, well, you know, let's manage your time schedule. Let's, let's fix, let's, let's see what we can do. And it's like, I don't need you to do anything. I just need you to hear that I'm feeling overwhelmed, that I'm feeling nervous, that I'm feeling scared. And by doing that for people, it's just like, I just need to be, I think now more than ever, people just need to be seen. Mm -hmm. People need to be heard. People need to be felt. Mm -hmm. People need to be received. Like you were saying, receive like hospitality. Mm -hmm. I just need to be received. Like I know that you are here going through whatever experience I have. I don't need you to change or alter my experience. I just need you to witness my experience. And as fellow travelers with spirit souls, that's actually our job. That's all we can do. Because if we feel there's this, this beautiful saying they say in a lot of 12-step uh, programs, or at least I learned from uh, a sponsor I had in the 12-step program, was that, that every person you interact with has a God and it's not me. Mm. You know what I mean? You have a God and it's not me. But mm -hmm. so often I try to play the role of God in your life. Mm -hmm. By, okay, I got to fix your problem. I got to soothe you. I got to comfort you. You know what I mean? I've got to be, mm -hmm. I've got to be the comforting voice and all these things. And like, no, all I need to do is be the witness of your experience so that you know, you're not going through it alone, mm -hmm. but actually it's a higher power. It's God. It's Krishna. It's who's, it's Radha and Krishna who are actually going to soothe you and provide the comfort and provide the reassurance and provide the guidance and provide, you know, and it's, and it's, it's really, it's, it's, when we're asking other people to have that faith, it's also an act of my faith. Mm -hmm. like, do I believe that if I can step back and just hold this person through that experience, that God will show up in their life? Because if mm -hmm. I don't believe that God's going to show up in somebody else's life, then of course I need to step in and I got to do this, that, or the other. Mm -hmm. um, but it's an act of faith for both of us. And so I just, it kind of reshifts the role that we play in other people's lives. Mm -hmm. And is an, it, it requires us to step up our own faith that, Oh, Krishna will show up in this person's life and all I got to do is just be with them long enough so that they stay in that moment of surrender, knowing they're not alone, creating space and time for Krishna to show up in their life. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, it's, it's a, it's again, it's that moment to moment surrender of like, I'm not the fixer. I'm not the comforter. I'm not the soother. I'm not the controller, but 
I am the witness and mm -hmm. I am the, 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 the fellow traveler and the friend. And the, so, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing, Baba. I'm, I'm loving it and, and appreciating that, you know, what an opportunity of service that gives all of us. Right. Yeah. And, and, and simultaneously, like what an insane amount of pressure that we may carry around if we think that we're the controllers and we're the doers and we're the fixers and we're, and everything is reliant upon us, you know, yeah. like, man, we're going to be bewildered by that. It's going to, yeah. that's a weight that when, if we carry that around, it crushes us immediately. We feel the, the anxiety, we feel the fear, we feel the pressure. And just that my consciousness is just a little bit, it's like two millimeters off, right? It's like the care is there. The intention is there. The love is there. The wanting to make a difference. It's all there. But like, I, I think that I'm in control of it all. Like, I think that I'm mm. the doer of it all. And then immediately, bam, this weight, this fear, this pressure, anxiety just starts to crush us, you know? Yeah. And totally. then actually being able to, whoa, like, oh my God, I don't control this. And actually, yeah. every person that I'm coming into contact with is the expert in their life. Yeah. Every single person that I'm coming into contact, they're the expert in their life. They just need a little bit of space, right? To, they need the right environment. They need the right space to be able to reawaken that inner wisdom reawaken yeah. that inner dialogue with their their higher power yeah and and so I'm, that's what i'm hearing from you sharing and yeah it's it's like i i experience this every conversation i have with anybody in terms of if it's you know a serious or or, or deep conversation or just someone's sharing something important in their life i experience oftentimes when someone comes to me with something i immediately experience there's a certain level of stress not a stress that someone's coming to me and dumping stuff on me but there's a stress of like, okay, I got to respond in the right way. This person's coming to me and I need to, I, okay, well, how can I give them words of comfort? How could I give them the right advice? And it's like, I'm kind of like scrambling for the right thing to say because I feel like I've got to, they're coming to me and I've got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. As opposed to a few times here and there, I'm learning and working on it. But if I realize, you know what? I don't have to do anything. I just have to listen. Mm -hmm. And if I need to say anything, I just reflect back what I heard. Mm -hmm. so that they know that I'm listening. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. And if I can do that, and then if I'm meant to give some sort of advice or courage or, uh, to them, you know, I could ask them, do they mm -hmm. want that even? Mm -hmm. And if I'm meant to be, I just pray within my heart, my dear Lord, if I'm supposed to say something, like guide me what I'm supposed to do in this, in this, in this, in this, um, in this conversation. If you want me to guide them in some way, then let me guide them. Tell me, and, and you inspire within me. If I'm just supposed, if if nothing meaningful comes to my mind, keep my mouth shut. Like, don't <laughs> don't just speak because I feel like I need to. Oh, boo, 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 you know what I mean? Like, don't yeah. say anything until something feels right. Yeah. You know. And so um, it's it's so beautiful. Actually, I was thinking of a I was thinking of a, a verse from the Bhagavad Gita. This is such a beautiful verse that I've we haven't read it before, but um, can I read it's it? Our yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll find it for a second. One second. It's, it's your, you know, what, what I'm hearing you share, DG, which is so powerful, right? And you mentioned this just before, but it's such an amazing point is that, that my faith, right? My faith, my faith is that this is happening. There, there is a reason that this person is experiencing what they're experiencing. There's an there's a opportunity for growth. There's an opportunity for transformation. And if I have faith in that principle, if I truly believe that principle, then I'm going to be with them. I'm not going to be in the mode of fixer. I think I'm the doer. I think I'm the controller. I'm going to step back, holding space for that reality, knowing that that's, if I do that, if I provide that space for them, that's yeah. going to awaken. That, that truth is within their heart. That connection with God is within their heart. The opportunity for transformation is within their heart. And, and we're holding space for that just by listening, by mm. reflecting. That's love. That's hospitality. That's empathy. And that's bringing out the best in them. That's helping awaken their soul. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's thank beautiful. you. It's our it's our own faith, right? To be able yes. to sit with somebody in their in their struggle, in their challenge, and to know that 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 the answer is within. The yeah, answer yeah, yeah. is going to awaken within. Beautiful. There was a question, beautiful question on the chat board. How much kindness can we extend without inserting our opinions and judgments? I think that's a great question, and I think that it it. Um, it goes us to to, rec, to to redefine or to ask, what does it mean to be kind in this situation? Mm. We have a definition of kindness in our mind. What is the loving thing to do? Um, we think it's not a cookie cutter answer. 
I think like, like, I mean, like a common example, like, you know, it's like, I, I have a puppy. We know that I talk about him every show. Um, you know, my wife loves chocolate. Sometimes the puppy wants chocolate. I think, oh, I, I love this puppy. I want to give him something delicious. So I'm going to give him chocolate. But puppies, dogs cannot digest chocolate. It get him sick and even die. That's not the kind thing to do. It's just to give him what I think. It's, it's really understanding what does this person need? What is it that they're looking for? And oftentimes, sometimes it can just involve asking them. You know what I mean? Like I do this sometimes with people. Um, especially like in my in my marriage or relationship with other people, somebody comes to me with something and I say, Do you I just say, like, do you want me to just listen? Do you want it do you want advice or opinion? Are you looking for a solution? And then they can just say, I just need someone to listen. I just say rather than us thinking, okay, I've got to figure it out. And so one is I think in answer to your question, you ask well, how do we do this kindness without inserting judgment, et cetera, we can ask the person and we can also ask God. We can ask Krishna in that moment. Please guide me how I can help. It's like the most, one of the most beautiful, sacred prayers we can ask. My dear Lord. It's like, it's like the, the essence of our identity as spirit souls is the constant prayer. My dear Lord, how can I help this person? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How can I help this person? And I think that, you know, um, Rana Swami, we, we were wrenching as, a, as, a, as an example, a teacher of ours. He's a, he's a monk. He's been a monk his entire life. He's never been married. But yet many of his disciples are married couples and uh, his students are married and they come to him with, with marriage questions. And at a certain point he asked us, he said, I don't understand why all these people come to me with marriage questions or advice because I don't have any direct experience in this field, you know? But he said, he said very beautiful, he said, but I really care about people. And he said, when you really care about people, Krishna gives you the intelligence how to help them. Mm -hmm. When you really care about people, Krishna really gives the intelligence of how to help them. So another question we're getting, does that mean that we shouldn't give advice to anyone if they're not asking it? Is it bad to object if they're into sinful activities, e.g. meat eating, etc.? Sometimes we have to recognize people are on their own journey, you know, and we have to, we can't, um, there's a beautiful song by a, a, one of my favorite artists, his name is Trevor Hall, and he says, you can't rush your healing, meaning that, Sometimes it's the experiences of life, even the tough ones, that we need to go through in order to grow into the person we need to become. And if we feel that we rob that person of that experience, even if they're through a tough time, sometimes we need to help somebody from jumping off a cliff, sure. And sometimes we just need to walk with someone through their tough experience and help see them through it to the other end. Um, but really, again, it comes to that inner connection. Go ahead, Vera, you're gonna say something. Yeah, no, appreciating it. And just like almost what, what I'm hearing you share is like, it's like, yeah, we're, we're, our intention is to serve. And also just like a, a little sutra that's coming from, from Bhagavad Gita is that, you know, one who inquires submissively, right? It's mm. like, like, okay, I think I have something to give here. Like I yeah. think that I'm gonna, by me sharing my advice, like I'm the transformational being mm. in this person's life, mm. I'm, I'm gonna, transform their consciousness i'm gonna help yeah, shift, yeah, them, yeah, shift yeah, their yeah. direction like if somebody's gonna do something they're gonna do it right we don't control yes. them. if there's if they're asking if there's if they're asking like really genuinely sincerely like i'm opening up to you doyle like man i really want your advice on this or hey i'm struggling you know we had the had the question here right if, if somebody is not asking sincerely and genuine genuinely save your breath save your breath just be with them, right? Yeah. If, if, if they're beating their head against the wall and they're not, not saying, hey, how do I get around the wall? We got to let somebody beat their head against the wall a little bit longer. And then at, at a certain point, they're going to say, I'm tired. I'm tired yeah. of beating my head against the wall. I got I, I, I to reach out. I got to ask for help. You know? mm. And then when somebody asks in that consciousness and we have the consciousness of how can I serve? How can I show mm. up for this person? Now, that is a beautiful combo, right? That's a yeah. the dyna the dynamic combination. Mm. So it's so beautiful, yeah. Let's hold it's our like, tongues. Let's hold them. It's it's, it's also, but it's uh, I think I think a big question that I recognize for myself is is where am I coming from in my wanting to give advice? You know, if people people can people sense where you're coming from. If I'm trying to control you, if I'm trying to nag you, if I'm trying to like tell you what to do because I just feel like I know what's right. There's a resistance to that. But if, like, if we're genuinely coming from a place of love and concern and, and 
that may mean patience. Like, because because what happens if okay, I'm going to tell you what to do. You don't listen to me. Screw you. Fine. Do whatever you want to do. Goodbye. You know, it's like, no, it's like, okay, like you do what you want to do. I'm so that when they get to a place, when we come to a place of seeking help, we're right there with them. Mm -hmm. Never left your side. You know, I've mm -hmm. always loved you. And, um, and, um, you know, I'm, you know, it's, 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 yeah. I mean, there's so many examples I can think of right now and so many verses coming to my mind, but Oh, Krishna, just being there for people. <laughs> yeah, keeping it simple, right? Coming back to what you're, you're, you're laying it out beautifully, DG, is that, hey, I, I, I'm asking to be an instrument of service in everybody's life that I come into contact with. Use yeah. me. You know, and, and oftentimes, let's say the 80% of the time, let's say the big, big, big percent of the time, listen, right? Yes. Be, be with someone in their experience. Listen. Yes. And if they're not genuinely asking for your thoughts and your inputs, just keep listening and it's the most yes. it is the most beautiful transformational thing we will witness people coming to their own realizations having their own breakthroughs and what did we do we facilitated that just by being with them just being with them and yeah. that empathy and that compassion so yeah I, 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 I have I like an example i have um i have i have a large family on my mom's side and i have a family member who's struggling with their immediate family right now their relationship with she has two kids and a husband and the husband is an alcoholic and you know, the relationship is just getting kind of pretty bad, not physically abusive, but like emotionally, verbally abusive, kind of scary. And everyone in the family is just saying, you got to divorce this guy, like get out of it, like leave it right now. But she doesn't want it. She's trying to like, hold on and just take it one step at a time. She's super stressed, this family member of mine. And you know, I don't talk to her much, but I, I keep in touch with when I call her, she doesn't want to get into all of the details of it, but what she needs more than any, what, what's pushing her away and causing her to isolate is people saying, this is what you got to do. Like make this huge decision with your life. You've got kids, you've got a marriage, you've got a home. And they're telling, you know, divorce this person, get out, get out, get out. And what all she wants is just someone to just ask her how she's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, she'll figure it out. She'll come to the decision, whatever it is on her own. And I have to surrender and everyone needs to surrender. Like whatever decision you make is your decision, mm -hmm. you know? But I love you no matter what, mm -hmm. whether you go, whether you stay, whatever you're doing, like, I love you. This is what I think. This is what I think you should do. But you don't have to listen to me. You do what you need to do. But I love you regardless. And it's kind of like just thinking that as it's like one example where if someone's in a tough situation and all they have is people telling them what to do, it just isolates them further. Mm -hmm. They don't want to pick up the phone when they see your number. They don't want to reach out and tell you how they're doing because they're not going to be heard. They're just going to be told what to do. And so I think that, you know, just in a real life example there, it's like somebody just basically literally just needing someone to check in how they're doing and, and accept them where they're at, no matter what they decide to do. It's hard, but um, someone said, I think you need a lot of grace to have that kind of radical acceptance. And that's the whole point. You're right. Radical grace, because it's really, again, I'm not the person like it's it, what is my prayer? My dear Lord, please help them do this or that because this is what I think needs to be done. But it's really, my dear Lord, please be present in their life and guide them what to do. This is, I wanted to just read this first. We'll end with this, but just to read a verse in our time together. This is the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, verse 23. Krishna says, yet in this body, there is another. In this body, there is another. A transcendental joyer who is the Lord, the supreme proprietor, who exists as the overseer and permitter, and who is known as the super soul. So when I'm engaging in conversation with that person, I need to know that there's a Lord in their heart that's guiding them. And it's almost like I need to speak to that Lord in their heart as much as to them as a person, because that overseer and permitter, that inner guide is really the third person in the equation. So anyways, beautiful. I feel like we're just getting started. It's already 930. <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful, DJ. And, and, you know, just weaving it you know, we're, we're weaving it in more and more kind of come into this, 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 the beautiful kind of what are the Vedas? What's the Bhagavad Gita saying about empathy and saying about being present in somebody else's mm. life that in my own life, in my own life, what am I doing to connect with the super soul within my heart? Mm. And, and to the degree that I'm connecting with God within my heart, through my spiritual practice, through my prayer, through meditation, like that I'm, I'm exposing myself to those spiritual practices and spiritual energy 
to that degree, when I come into contact with another person, my soul, if it's, if it's awake and a little bit more and it's communicating a little bit more with that super soul, then when I come into contact with another person who's got the same thing going on in their heart, they got a soul and a super soul, so much more likely, right? Just that, that, that soul wakens up, right? That soul starts to connect a little more with the inner guide, that inner voice. Mm. And that, that's, what we're, that's what we're doing. That's what we're talking about with empathy. That's what we're talking about with grace and mm. compassion. That's what we're talking about. That yeah. you know, through our presence, somebody feels God's love through us. Somebody feels yes. that you know, I'm being seen, I'm being accepted, and I'm being loved unconditionally, which is a, an aspiration. You know? yeah. that, 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 that's what I'm seeking because that's the nature of my soul. Yes. That is who I am. And so that's what I'm seeking. That's what every person is seeking. That's what we're holding space for in our dialogue yeah, and communication. Totally. Somebody wrote on the flip side is having the courage to ask for help and guidance from teachers and friends. Yes, like we have to have the courage to reach out. And so our job, our role, we can end with this is how can I make this person as comfortable and feeling safe as possible? Mm -hmm. You read the first chapter in the beginning of the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. That's what Krishna does. Mm -hmm. He gets to a point where he reaches out and breaks and asks Krishna mm -hmm. for help. But mm -hmm. what does Krishna do the whole first? Krishna never once like interrupts Arjuna. Like Arjuna, Arjuna, stop it! Like get it together! Like stop! You know, being so emotional. Like it's not it's not that big of a deal. You know, <laughs> he doesn't interrupt Arjuna. He doesn't interrupt him. He lets Arjuna have his meltdown. Mm -hmm. He lets Arjuna have his little tizzy fit in his moment. And, like, and then Arjuna, like, he, what, but he just stays there with him. Mm -hmm. And then finally, it's not until the seventh verse of the second chapter that Arjuna finally says, you know what, Arjuna, Krishna, I, I have spun myself in circles. And, you know, my best thinking got me to where I am now. Please help me get out of here. And then Krishna's right there. Mm -hmm. So it's having the courage to ask for help when we need it. But it's mm -hmm. also helping people feel safe and comfortable to get to the point that when they do ask, you're right there with them. And it's like, oh, they, it's, it's, it's not about telling people what to do. It's about helping people feel safe enough to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Our Junus, our Junus Hissy Fizz, what we can call the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. The first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is literally called the yoga of despair. Yeah. You know? So anyways, um, it's 931. We've gone over time. I feel like we're just getting started. Um, uh, hospitality professional says they love where it stemmed from. I've got some heart emojis. I've got some laughing emojis. I think we're doing something right if we get those two things. <laughs> um, and uh, I love you, Vera, and I love everybody love here. Too, Vivi, bro. so good to see you, Vivi. Uh, Breja Sundari, oh my God, all these beautiful souls. Bimala is from Europe, my dear old brother. So, so good. Yeah, yoga and horses, Trisha. Sending a Srimad Bhagavatam verse for us to check out. Thanks, bro. Thank you. All right, Vir, you want to close in word for us as we Let's, sign off? Let, let us, you know, I love it, right? Okay, when we're in that place where we don't know right now, if I'm feeling in a place where I'm stuck or if I'm feeling in a place where I'm disconnected from myself, let's pray. Let's pray mm -hmm. right now. My Lord, put me into contact. Reach out to that friend. Reach out to that teacher. Get into that community. Get into that conversation mm -hmm. where you know that people, they're trying to put God in the center of their life. They're trying to put their spiritual life in the center. They're wanting to live a life of compassion. If we're feeling mm. that we're disconnected right now, let's reach out. Let's reach out to that friend. Let's put ourselves into that conversation, that dialogue, so that we can wake up that connection again. We can feel mm. that connection. That's what we're seeking. That's what we're looking for. And uh, thank you guys so much for thank tuning in. Thank you so in. much. Thank you. Lalita Priya, Bryn, Kaylee. Go good to see you guys, Joseph. Signing off. And we'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. In the meantime, if you need connection, reach out to us. Um, and we're happy to be in touch. Love you guys. Take Love care. You. Love you, bro. Anymore.